went away to Delaware and then he dropped out. This is this is this is what we know. And so uh, all the news agencies, it was like a firestorm. Uh, my phone was blowing up. Chris, because he can't like type a long text and he's, he's at a, 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 a what is it called? A minor league baseball game with some of his family members. All I do is I get a text and it says Biden down. <laughs> so let's say. And I'm like, oh, Chris found out too. He knows too. So do we have any news articles for we could put up and then we're going to get into the prophecy and the other things that are linked to this that are going on. So let's see here. Do we have the news article? Yeah. Okay. It's coming. And I'm trying to keep Sadie from walking. I, I thought that's what was going on there. So. Uh, basically these are the kind of, uh, uh, things that came out and then the articles about, I don't know if we have those, but the articles about him actually exiting the race. Do we have any of those? Okay. They're saying yes. So we'll show that too. And then we are going to talk about it. Here we go. All right. Commentator Halpern. Now this came out before the weekend. This came out on Thursday or Friday, this article. Biden exit from White House race likely this weekend. So that came out Friday and they were kind of, they had sources that were saying this. Uh, Those sources were indeed correct. And Biden withdrew. He endorsed Kamala. Now, the thing about this is, of others seriously for their candidate right now because it is slim pickings on that side but this is what they're going to do and we are going to get into now everything that is connected to this everything we're going to even go back four or five years in prophecy for this uh to talk about all this so we have a clip from august 31st 2021 so this clip is almost three years old uh this word from the lord And now much shall be required of them, for it is as the kingdom shall be torn away from Saul, says the Lord of hosts. And just when Athaliah thinks it's up for grabs, something unprecedented in your nation shall occur. As I, the Lord, raise leaders up and I cause them to fall, for they have desecrated what is holy. They have mocked my authority, meaning the Lord. They have praised the gods of gold and silver and principalities. O Belthazar, Belthazar. Shazar, the hand is coming for the writing on the wall is at hand. That's in the book of Daniel. Mene, mene, tekel ufarsin, in all capitals. You shall be judged and found wanting, and those propping you up shall be judged as well. For this is a shadow <clears throat> presidency within a shadow government, says the Lord this day. A prop, a ruse, and puppets are indeed disposable, says the Lord thy God this day. Okay, so that's from almost three years ago, that word of the Lord that was uh, pointing at this. We're going to go back to the dream of Biden in bed, too, because that came to pass also. That is in the middle of coming to pass before our very eyes. And we'll go back to that as well. August 2nd, 2022. And says the Lord of hosts, bait fish to catch a larger. Bait fish indeed have been thrown out for a catch. Oh, they are chumming the waters, says the Lord. And I, the Lord God, as you, O leaders, who have been stolen from, I, the Lord your God, will order your steps. I shall reveal the blueprint, but you must listen, that's capital. So you do not, that's capital, get caught in deep waters, that's capital. As the temptation is there, says the Lord of hosts, for there are those lurking in the deep, seeking an occasion to take out entire family lines, says the Lord of hosts. They are seeking an occasion to throw out their nets for a catch and pin the people down as they poke and prod them as cattle, says the Lord of hosts. For all the shuffling is being brought to the surface as even a garland shall lose their prestige for the deals they made, the blood that was shed and the refuse that was created from such foolish, sloppy policy says the Lord of hosts this day. So that was almost two years ago. Bait fish to catch a larger. So basically this came out right, I gave this word right before the Mar-a-Lago raid. This word of the Lord, I believe, is right before they raided Mar-a-Lago or close to it. Or uh, there might have been another one from 2023, but this one came, I know, before the Mar-a-Lago raid. Now, October 6, 2022, we have the clip of this when I gave this word from the Lord, so we'll play it. 
And says the spirit of the Lord this day, a strange plan shall begin to unfold in your nation. Strange indeed, says the Lord, for the liberalness thinks it has found a loophole to thread the needle, to bait and switch, to under the guise of deception, illness and timing can seamlessly switch the leadership. However, says the Lord, they have miscalculated their timing. That's capitalized. Okay, so a strange plan shall begin to unfold in your nation. The liberalness thinks it has found a loophole to thread the needle, to bait and switch under the guise of deception, illness, and timing. Can we put up that uh, C-19 news article again? Deception, illness, timing. So we'll put that back up for you. There we go. Illness, right? Deception and the timing of it coming just... Uh, what, six or seven days after they attempted to assassinate Trump? So that was the three things. Illness, deception, and timing. Uh, there was also an October, a word from October 6, 2022 that said, I, the Lord thy God, am dealing with the Athaliahs as well and the spirit behind them and ancient demons, says the Lord of hosts. One shall try and destroy another as a very public squabble breaks loose amongst the Athaliahs and further smears their party name. Watch for this now. Watch for this because the Athaliahs are going to start fighting and jockeying for position now because they think Ahaziah is out of the way. I mean, they're really going to start going at each other. So just watch for this because that was part of the same prophecy. Uh, April 8th, 2023, I'll play the clip for you right now. However, a fall off a high seat shall leave those unable to continue in their half charade. Bait and switch, bait and switch, says the Lord. Indict and switch at the same time. This shall be attempted, says the Lord. A fall off a high seat shall leave those unable to continue in their half charade. We've watched that happen. That is happening before our very eyes. Now. December 11th, 2023, we're going to go through all these. I'm going to read this to you. Thus says the Lord, the Rose Garden, just watch, says the Lord, the events that unfold and what is spoken out of such a place that has many thorns hidden in such bushes, says the Lord. Time is short, leaders, to repent, time is short. Abate and switch, says the Lord. Abate and switch, watch for the subtlety, says the Lord, watch for them. Some are trading their sons for their positions, says the Lord. They are putting their sons on the wall as a sacrifice. Others, their sons shall rise up in the coming season and be placed in higher positions they initially did not want. However, I, the Lord, am prodding them. And then the Lord says, don't be a wise guy, says the Lord. Be a wise guy, capital, instead, for you do not think you need me. But you shall see, says the Lord, you shall see. That statement right there was pinpointed at that assassination attempt. You don't think you need me, says the Lord, but oh, you need me. And the Lord proved it last Saturday that Donald Trump very much needs him. That Donald Trump is not going to be able to do this without the Lord. And surrendering and staying under that yoke. Right? Because the Lord's saying, you don't think you need me, but you're going to see, says the Lord, that you need me. And that is what is coming out now. Okay. Uh, January 22nd, 2024. We got some other interesting things to tie this into, too, where you're going to be like, what in the world? It's coming. Don't worry. It's coming in a few minutes. January 22nd, 2024. The Lord thy God. Um. Oh, there's Toby. I, I saw people say Toby in the chat, and I was like, where's Toby? Toby's here. Okay, let's see here. I uh, okay. So he talks about the Lord staring that division down. He says, "I'm looking, I'm looking at it in its evil, perverse eyes, and as it trembles, my holy angels are dispatched to drag it back to the pits from which it came from. For I, the Lord thy God, in this hour, am pouring out my glory. I am pouring it out. I am bringing my people not only out of Egypt. Egypt is coming out of them. The idols are coming out of them. The idols are coming out of the highest seats in the land. You may cling to the horns of the altar, but you will not stand in a seat. I, the Lord, have anointed and appointed for such a time. So cleave unto me, my children. Know that I am the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Receive it. Activated. It is your weapon right now against a very, very trembling and nervous kingdom of darkness as they have been baited to fall in this hour. They have been baited to fall in this hour. 
by my power and your faith. Behold, I have given it unto you this day. Use it for they shall lift the name of my son above this nation into the airwaves, into the air. And there shall be a shout of victory from my people by the end of this, if you stay the course. Thus says the Lord of hosts in Jesus name. So that was from January 22nd, 2024. May 28th, 2024 is when I talked about if April is the sixth hour and darkness comes over the land in the sixth hour, it's going to last till the ninth hour, July, and this assassination attempt happened within that window. It happened in July. And I had a pastor friend remind me and he said, don't you remember what you said to me on the phone? He said, you remember? He said, you don't remember, but I do. He said, you said the Lord is going to grab Donald Trump by the ear and turn him. So he said, this is what you said to me on the phone. And it just flew out of my mouth. Then I remembered when he said it, I remembered we were having a discussion about this privately. Uh, and that is what God said. Now, go to June 8th, 2024. We're going to go through the whole word of June 8th, but prophesy to the Valley of Bones, all capitals in your nation, that the grave will release its grip and your nation comes forth from the tomb of Sodom. It was so placed in know this day. I am God. There is no other a historic and unprecedented time calls for such measures. So he's calling it a historic and unprecedented time. Now you have it on also May 17th, 2022, which is over two and a half years earlier. You shall see the unprecedented and unexpected happen in political races in your nation. You shall see those who walk with me win when it was broadcast. They would not, says the Lord of hosts. I, the Lord, am assembling the team, the spiritual team for the next leaders, says the Lord. I have called them by name to wake up and sound the alarm to the nation. Okay, so let's show the picture of Speaker Johnson. We're just going to show you this. Here it is. House Speaker Mike Johnson said in a post, President Biden must, uh, so he's upset about this basically, Mike Johnson, but he says, at this unprecedented juncture in American history, we must be clear about what just happened. The demo, what did it, what did May 17, 2022 and June 8, 2024 say? Unprecedented. You shall see the unprecedented and, unex and unexpected happen in political races in your nation. Why 100 is important. There was a hundred years between when Jonah prophesied destruction on Nineveh that the Lord relented of because they repented. And a hundred years later, Nahum, right, says, okay, you're done, Nineveh. You're done. We're closing up shop. And he prophesied the destruction of Nineveh. It was a hundred year cycle. 1924, the Olympics were in Paris, France. A hundred years later, on in the year 2024, that the eclipse passes over more than eight cities named Nineveh in the United States of America, you have the hundred years between 1924 and 2024, where the Olympics again were in Paris, France. Now of Nineveh, this all ties together. So I just want I just wanted to show that to you. Now. October 6, 2020. We have the clip of this. Now, let me let me preface this before we play the clip. I was on top of a mountain when I prophesied this from the Lord. I was in Wyndham, New York, on top of a mountain with demons not happy I was there. And it was Chris's birthday. And the Lord wakes me up during the night and gives me this word. I call it the Clash of the Titans word. And I prophesy this October 6, 2020 from the top of a mountain. And we're going to play the clip for you. There shall be a clash of the titans in Washington, D.C., the likes of which has never been seen. Historic, says the Lord of hosts this day. However, in clashes, there shall come forth casualties, and there shall be those exposed in both parties who have been liaisons for wicked interests of foreign entities, says the Lord of hosts this day. Both parties capitalized. And a core shall arise and come forth, a core that fight and stands for truth. My capitalized word of truth, says the Lord. My truth shall go forth in the midst and expose a chain gang of players, all working together to overthrow not only the foundation of the United States of America, but capitalized, all sense of morality and faith in God. 
They are looking for a demolition, says the Lord, and a demolition they shall receive upon their own heads. Watch and see, says the Lord of hosts this day. The trumpet will sound, the trumpet will sound. In the midst, the trumpet will sound, says the Lord. For I, the Lord, am making an unexpected move that will catch the enemy, his alliance, and those involved in the darkest of dealings off guard, off kilter. A surprise attack, capitalized, shall pierce and puncture their plans. They will draw their own blood, for those spirits they have been conjuring and calling upon are out for blood and highly competitive, my capitalized children. This is where you shall see the most shocking infighting occurring within groups. There is one major player in particular who shall publicly fall fast and hard, branded for what branded for what they are, says the Lord of hosts this day. You shall see J. Seculo arise within the mist. Yet again, says the Lord, for my mantle of law and order is upon him. My spirit rests upon him and my wisdom dwells within him. He shall be compelled to the forefront very soon. Watch for this, for it is a sign that the defense of the wicked shall fall, says the Lord. They okay, so that was. And thank you for playing that. I'm just trying to get my notes back up. That was almost four years ago. Now, there's something about this word when it says, for I, the Lord, am making an unexpected move that will catch the enemy, his alliance, and those involved in the darkest of dealings off guard, off kilter, a surprise attack. Now, that assassination attempt on Trump was a surprise attack. What surprised them even more is that he was turned. And they missed him. They missed their mark. Shall pierce and puncture their plans. So the Lord's going to do a surprise counter against them. And it's going to pierce and puncture their plans. This could have very much been talking about this assassination attempt. Because it talks about the clash of the titans. That's how they ousted Biden. They infighted. And it's shocking and it's unprecedented. And the Republicans are up in arms about it going, do you realize what just happened? The Democratic Party just ousted their nominee. So this was almost four years ago, this word. And so that's, I mean, that, that's a considerable amount of time. So we just wanted to put that in here as well. I mean, praise the Lord for accuracy. And I just wanted to go through that with you because that word was pointing at what we see happening right now. Uh, and so there's something else that nobody is really talking about that we need to discuss. Now, I don't know if I, I sent, I don't think I sent pictures. Hold on. I might be able to do this real time. Let me go to screenshots because there was something that I put two and two together in my mind, but I can describe it to you and you can go find it for yourself too. Unless our team wants to look for it as I'm starting to talk about it. January 2nd, 2024, Jesse Waters Live has a psychic and a witch on. Do you all remember this? He has a psychic and a witch on. And she, thank you. And she pulls a card having to do with death and loss against Donald Trump. Do you remember this happened? It's the beginning of 2024. Jesse Waters, because he listens to his producers, that producer should be ashamed of themselves that even attempted to play with the fire that is involved in occultic activity. They should be ashamed of themselves for doing that, and they should be rebuked for even thinking this was something that was productive. And so Jesse Waters has her on, and she pulls what looks to be a Grim Reaper. Okay, so it looks to be somebody in a dark cloak having to do with death and loss. And this card is pulled against Donald Trump. Do you remember this now? Because nobody's talking about this, that this happened. And this happens at the beginning of the year. So January to July, right? February, March, April, May, June, July. Six. Six months later. The attempt happens at 6.11 p.m. So six months 
from the time this card is pulled nationally by a psychic and a wish a witch against Donald Trump six months after the assassination attempt happens at 6 11 p.m this is not a coincidence this is how the kingdom of darkness works and you had a producer who was the liaison to pump this out into the nation which was like putting a giant spell out there this is what this was doing it was putting a giant spell out there it was putting a curse of death upon that man and that's why I got so infuriated. If you remember, I covered this when it first happened and I lost my stuff over it because I was so infuriated because I knew the seriousness of, 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 of the demonic and the occult and operating in witchcraft and what it can do. And they pumped this out nationally. And it's by no mistake that six months later at 6, 11 PM, that assassination attempt happened. It is by no mistake. And you know what? I praise the Lord that he told me to keep the date for the night of prayer. That the Lord told me to keep that date, which was the Sunday prior to the incident. The Lord told me, don't you move that date. You keep it for July 7th. And I listened. Uh, and I praise the Lord that I heard him and I listened. And we kept that uh, We kept that date. Now, people are talking about the shots being fired at... 6 11 p.m i want to see if i have it written in here i don't think i do but ephesians 6 11 because people were talking about this put on the full armor of god so that you may be able to stand up against all the schemes and all the strategies and deceits of the devil stand up against what happened after he went down he stood back up you see that's what makes this scripture verse so important to what happened that you may be able to stand up against so when he went down and it happened and he stood up and he raised his fist, that what encompasses what this scripture verse is all about. That when the enemy comes in with his schemes and his plots to steal, kill and destroy, you put your armor on and you stand against it and his plan falls. The plans of the enemy falter and they fall. Okay, let's move on. Let's see here. Oh, yes. July 3rd, 2023. But I, before I get into this prophecy, I'm just going to say this, that Fox News hosts have to be very careful right now what they are led to do by producers, because you don't know who they serve and who their God is. And a Fox News host can be used as a prop and as a liaison to actually help attempt to put a curse out against an entire nation and cause that nation to fall. And that is a dire warning I'm giving right now to hosts, not only on Fox News, but on CNN, MSNBC, and everything in between. You better watch what you put out there right now, what you say, and what you have on that you think is a funny stunt. Because the Lord is watching and the Lord just proved his hand. He just proved and put on a demonstration of his power when he did what he did. And if you would like to be the participant of helping the enemy further his agenda and his interests, then this will be your hour. This will be your hour of judgment if that's what you want to do. Okay. July 3rd, 2023. For I am the God of justice. I bring justice of the highest caliber. It is righteous. It is holy. All capitals. You have tipped the scales. You have blinded justice and falsely weighed down the scales to tip in your favor. However, there is about to be a very large swing of the pendulum. And what you have sent forth is about to make a turn and implode from within, says the Lord of hosts. And it shall be a very public disaster, says the Lord, that networks in a panic shall even turn against such as they all see the writing on the wall. This is July 3rd, 2023. Let's show once again the cover of Time Magazine from this July. Panic. One word. Panic with Biden walking away out of view. What did this word say from 2023? There was going to be a swing of the pe pendulum. 
It shall be a very public disaster, says the Lord, that networks in a panic shall even turn against such as they all see the writing on the wall. After that debate, networks went into a complete full-blown panic. They all did. Time Magazine puts out that cover. The word just panic and Joe Biden walking off. That should have been uh, the indication that he was exiting the race. They almost had him exiting the magazine cover. So that should have been our indication that he was going to exit the race. Um, I wanted to read to you Ephesians 6, 12 through 17, because we did 6, 11 just now. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to resist and stand your ground in the evil day. And having done everything to stand firm, your place fully prepared, immovable. That's what St. Parentheses. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth around your waist and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace and preparation. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flames, all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation. That piece of armor is what saved Donald Trump's life. The helmet of salvation. That was the piece of armor right there in the armor of God that saved his life and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You should be putting the armor of God on every day. You can't go into battle without your armor. You can't go, you can't go into battle unless you're equipped. I do it every day. I encourage you to start doing it every day. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, according to Ephesians chapter six, I ask you to put your whole and complete armor on me this day. Now I want to take you back to September 1st, 2022. Biden gives a speech. The battle for the soul of the nation. Saying former President Donald Trump and his Republican allies threaten the foundation of our republic. See, he switches back and forth when he wants. So basically, like he goes back and forth as he feels like. Biden gave the nationally broadcast speech Thursday from the Independence National Historic Park in downtown Philadelphia, where the U.S. Constitution was crafted. Why is he giving this speech from there? Because it's the battle for the soul of the nation speech. The Constitution is tied to the soul of the nation. So therefore, if he's going to try to spiritually override that, he's got to do it from the place where the Constitution was drafted. And this is what he said. I speak to you tonight from sacred ground because he knows he knows he's got to go back to ground zero. No pun intended. He's got to go back to where the Constitution was drafted. An American Independence Hall in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Isn't it interesting that he gave the soul of the nation speech from Pennsylvania and the assassination attempt on Trump happened in Pennsylvania? Don't you find that uh, that correlation and that tie? I don't think that's a coincidence. MAGA forces are determined. He makes us sound like we're some like special ops team. It's the MAGA forces that are after you. Okay. MAGA forces are determined to take this country backwards. Backwards to an America where there is no right to choose, no right to privacy, no right to contraception, no right to marry who you love. Oh, isn't he poetic? They promote authoritarian leaders and they fan the flames of political violence that are a threat to our personal rights, to the pursuit of justice, the rule of law, the very soul of this country. I believe America is at an inflection point, one of those moments that determine the shape of everything that's to come after. You bet it was. And now America must choose to move forward or to move backwards, to build a future or obsess about the past, to be a nation of hope and unity and optimism or a nation of fear and darkness. This is a nation that rejects violence as a political tool. Oh, really? Isn't that interesting that Joe Biden said that two months before the midterms in 2022, and it was those very type of people that tried to take out Donald Trump. We do not encourage violence. We are still Americans who believe in honesty and decency and respect for others. Patriotism, liberty, justice for all, hope and possibility. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't be pro-insurrectionists and pro-American. Oh, really? Wasn't George Washington and all of them? in a way, insurrectionists. They were trying to, to, to you know, to deal with, uh, you know, the the circus of uh, that England in imperialism had, had put upon them. Uh, okay, he, so he's saying pro-insurrectionists and pro-American, they're incompatible. We can't allow violence to be normalized in this country. 
It's wrong. We have to reject political violence. Notice how we keep saying this over and over two years before this happened. I ran for president because I believe we are in a battle for the soul of this nation. Right words, the breath stinks. Kim Clement used to say that. Right words, wrong breath. Right words, the breath absolutely stinks and needs Colgate Crest, or I don't care which one you choose, to clean it out. Because this is a battle for the soul of the nation. This is this is like the servant girl that followed Paul around going, these are the servants of the Most High God. And it was the right words, but it was the wrong breath. This is the same thing we're dealing with here, okay? Now, I suppose in the word of God, if the Lord can speak through the mouth of an ass, he can speak through the mouth of Joe Biden, I suppose. But this is a case to me that seems like right words, wrong breath. Okay, so we're in a battle for the soul of this nation. I still believe that to be true. I believe the soul is the breath, okay? The life and the essence of who we are. The soul is what makes us. The soul of America is defined by the sacred proposition that all are created equal in the image of God. Right words, wrong breath, breath stinks. That all are entitled to be treated with decency, dignity, and respect. That all deserve justice and a shot in lives of prosperity and consequence. Look at this. I talk about a battle for the soul of the nation and Cyrus walks in. I talk about a battle and he walks right in like a champ. That democracy, democracy must be defended. For democracy makes all these things possible. Now, do you notice how we keep switching back and forth between republic, democracy, republic? That's meant to confuse you. That is literally meant to, to confuse you, confound you, and drive you nuts. It is a republic. We are built upon a republic. This is the way it is. That's not going to change. So in the media, the Mockingbird Digital Age Coliseum Guerrilla Warfare Avatar Media, okay, keep saying that he's a threat to our democracy. He's a threat to our democracy. You're absolutely right, because we're a republic. He is a threat to your democracy. He is a threat to your version of it that you took and flipped on its head and corrupted in order to grow your demonic ideologies. So you're absolutely right about that. Folks, And it's up to us. That's what he says. Democracy begins and will be preserved in we, the people's habits of the heart. You're right, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, Joe. And you've said a mouthful in this speech. In our character, optimism that is tested yet endures courage that digs deep when we need it. Empathy that fuels democracy. The willingness to see each other not as enemies, but as fellow Americans. That is part of that speech. I wanted you to hear it for good reason. I wanted you to hear this for good reason. Oh, I was reading it at 6.11 p.m. Someone just put in the chat, it's 6.11 p.m. And here I am reading the battle for the soul of the nation. You see, God's timing is absolutely perfect. All glory be to God. But this is a battle for the soul of the nation. They have put the soul of the nation and the nation itself in grave clothes and tried to throw it in the tomb of Sodom that they have so let it into. And this is a Lazarus moment for this nation right now. We are at a Lazarus moment in this nation where when the Lord Almighty, Jesus Christ, calls this country and says, America, come forth. Are we going to come out of that tomb? Because this is definitely a Lazarus moment that we are fast approaching in this nation. And that Jesus in that moment told them to roll the stone away. And they said, Lord, he's been dead four days. Now, why did Jesus wait four days? Because it's believed that by that point, the soul has exited the body. Otherwise, the Jews could have argued that the man's soul was still in his body and he could have easily woken up. So Jesus waited four days, according to their tradition, to go wake Lazarus up. And so roll the stone away. What is the stone? The stone is what is blocking right? It's it's in the way. It's blocking off the tomb. It's blocking everybody off from getting to Lazarus, right? And Jesus says, take away the stone. And they roll the stone away. And all he says is, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus in his grave clothes comes walking out in front of everybody and scares them 
I mean, they were shook. I don't know how else to say it. Whoever was there, they were completely shook. This is a Lazarus moment for this nation right now. The Lord is going to call this nation out of the tomb. And there's going to be many that says, but Lord, it's been dead four days. But Lord, if you if you call it out, it, it, it smells. The stone is in the way. Don't do it. And the Lord's going to go take the stone away. And he's going to call forth for America to come out of the grave that corrupt men and women and wicked ideologies and ancient demons all played a role in placing it in. And we are coming to that very moment. Okay. Let me see here. January 27th, 2023. And the spirit of the Lord says this day, they shall come with chains and fetters to bind you. And if you humbly come to me, capital, I shall break their chains of iron. Their charges shall befall them for they have been doing even worse in the dark behind the door to the inner chamber. They have met, four leaders have met from such committees. Now this is in 2023. And in this meeting, they have discussed a leader swap. Oh, what's happening right now? A leader swap with each one at the table playing a role. Thus says the Lord, they have discussed shutting down grids and markets in key parts of the country. What's happening right now? Oh, they're having this major computer outage that's shutting down markets and banks in key parts of the country to scare the people and herd them like cattle into their plans. The paper that outlines your points and plans shall be revealed, says the Lord, it shall it shall be by one who has had a yoke of conviction come upon them. It shall surprise you, says the Lord. It shall. Now, we have that news article from the Daily Mail when it broke about the four leaders' names that were involved in this. And the Daily Mail actually broke this article. And it happened recently. So if we have it, I'll show it to you. Let's see if we have it from the Daily Mail. Because this was recent that it happened. And they had four leaders' names on this article that this man had a source and basically exposed the four leaders' names. Schumer and Pelosi was two of them. Uh, and then there were two other names. But in this word from January 27, 2023, it says four leaders have met from such and they have discussed a leader swap and they have discussed shutting down grids and markets in key parts of the country. Both are happening right now. Both are happening. Let's see if we're able to, are we able to find that? The Daily Mail? No. Okay. So maybe you can look it up online. It's the Daily Mail article with the four. Yeah. They broke it about, it was Schumer, Pelosi, Obama, I think and Hillary. And it was the four of them. So what, we'll keep talking and they'll look for it and we'll come back to it. So I wanted to show you something else too that's interesting because people have been talking a lot about this Leviticus and blood on the right ear. So basically when Aaron and his sons were consecrated as priests, Moses had to slaughter the ram. He had to put the blood on the right ear, on the right big toe. It was all on the right side, right? And they've been talking about this with blood on the right ear with Donald Trump. Well, I'm going to read this to you for a different reason. So I'm going to read to you Leviticus 8, 23 through 24. Moses slaughtered the ram and took some of its blood and put it on the lobe of Aaron's right ear, on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. Moses also brought Aaron's sons forward and put some of the blood on the lobes of their right ears, on the thumbs of their right hands, and on the big toes of their right feet. Then he splashed blood against the side of the altar. Before casting forth the blood round the altar in the usual manner, Moses took a portion of the blood and put some of it on the right extremities of each of the priests. This being performed with the blood of the peace offering has been supposed to figure the readiness of the priest who is at peace with Yahweh to hear with the ear and obey the divine word, to perform with the hand the sacred duties of his office, and to walk with the feet in the way of holiness. This is why they put the blood on the ears, on the right thumb, and on the right toe. Now, I know people have been talking a lot about this with the blood uh, on Donald Trump's ear and him being struck in the ear and, and having to do a consecration. And I, you know, I, I, I kind of understand that, but I want to show, I wanted to read these scriptures to you for a different reason. It's Leviticus 8, 23 through 24. If you add 23 and 24, you get 47, which is the presidential race that we're in. So I want you to see this for a different reason. <laughs> 
because yes, he was struck on the ear. But if you add 23 and 24, you get 47. And that's the presidential race that we are in right now. So I just wanted you to see that as well, that part of it. Now, there's also something I want to throw out there to you in the middle of all this. And on March 14th, I heard this and I wrote this down and I actually have a time stamped in Microsoft Word. So I have this actually time stamped that I wrote this down. Uh, we're going to get a screenshot of it. And next time I'm on, I'll put it up because we actually have the time stamp of it. But I heard Manchurian Candidate. Now, I didn't know much about Manchurian Candidate. But I want to read to you what the premise of a Manchurian Candidate is and what it has to do with 1959. So the name comes from a 1959 political thriller adapted for the screen in 1962. Frank Sinatra was in it. And then Denzel Washington was in it in 2004. It involves a Korean war veteran who returned home a decorated war hero, but was actually captured, brainwashed, and given false memories by the Chinese. His handlers are maneuvering him to assassinate a leading candidate for president. Interesting, right? thereby putting in place for the office his running mate, a Nixon or McCarthy-like villain who is being manipulated by his mother through more conventional means. But his false memories are wearing thin and he's starting to realize what really happened. Uh, the term has since come to be used to mean a politician who is stealthily and perhaps even unknowingly being used to advance the goals of a foreign power. So March 14th, 2024, I hear Manchurian Candidate. And it all surrounds an assassination attempt. And this was from 1959. This is when this first came out, this book. Do you know this is on CIA.gov? Do you know this book happens to be on CIA.gov? Don't believe me? Go look it up for yourself. It is there, which is a little creepy, I will admit. But it's there. And the fact that I heard this March 14th, 2024, and this is all about brainwashing somebody young to assassinate a leading candidate for president, I don't think is a coincidence. Here you go. The Manchurian candidate. Yep. 1959. So that means it's 65 years since uh, this book came out. Um, six plus five equals 11. Shots were fired at 6.11 p.m against that assassination attempt. Exodus 611 says, go tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the children of Israel go out of this land. Isn't that interesting? That's what Exodus 611 is. Go tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to let the children of Israel go out of this land. Uh, Genesis 611 says, the earth was corrupt in God's sight and the land was filled with violence, which is Hamas in Hebrew. So Genesis 611, the earth was corrupt in God's sight and the land was filled with violence. Isn't that interesting? Hosea 611, also, O Judah, there is a harvest of divine judgment appointed for you when I restore the fortunes of my people who have been, sl who have been slaves to the misery of sin. So I wanted to show you a few other scripture verses with that that are just very interesting in how they all tied together. So we're almost done here because we're going to bring on we have a couple of guests we're going to bring on here. So we're going to have to do this in two parts. But I want to get to the corpse flower. This is the last thing we're going to cover tonight. We have to cover this. I didn't even know this thing existed. I happened upon it suddenly. And let's put up the article. For the corpse flower. Because it is astounding. Corpse flower season. Okay. So, stinky plant to bloom soon at the Huntington Library. Hunt. Corpse hunt. Okay. I just want you to keep that in mind. Corpse flower to bloom at the Hunt Tington Library. Okay. The corpse flower, also known as the world's largest flower, will soon uh, be. Uh, will soon bloom at the Huntington Library, Art Museum, and Botanical Gardens in San Marino. 
the rare plant which is scientifically referred to as, let's see if I can pronounce this, Amorphophallus titanum blooms for only 24 hours every two to three years. So this plant does not bloom for three years. The year that all of this happens and the timing of Biden getting C-19 and stepping out of the race and the timing of them attempting to assassinate Donald Trump is the timing that this corpse flower, it's called a corpse flower, is meant to bloom. Now you tell me whether this is coincidence because I don't think this is a coincidence one iota. And not only do I think this is not a coincidence, but the fact it's at the Hunt, Huntington Museum, Hunt, corpse, Hunt, you getting the picture? Because this is by no mistake, this flower has been put on display and set to bloom at a time where we have had assassination attempts. We have had leaders stepping down. We've had leaders getting C-19. We've had all of this crazy happening. That is when this flower is set to bloom. This is what I'm talking about. What goes on in the realm of the spirit affects the natural. And this thing is, this sucker is sitting there right now, just waiting to bloom. And apparently when it does, it stinks. And this is why it's called the corpse flower. But I wanted to make you aware of this because when I saw this, my jaw nearly dropped that the timing of this flower is set to bloom now in the middle of all of this. This is not coincidence, people. This is not. These things happen. They happen in tandem. They happen in clusters. They happen in certain... Someone said it smells like death. Probably right. That's why it's called the corpse flower. That's what I would think anyway. So... Oh my goodness. I think that's where I think we're going to end it with the corpse flower tonight. We're going to have a part two though. What it, What is this? Oh, is this the, here it is. Okay. So this was the daily mail article that was broken initially where I had that prophecy that I read that four leaders have met in secret, secret democratic plot to replace Biden revealed how Clinton, Obama, Pelosi, and Schumer, how many leaders did the Lord say met in secret? Like a year and a half prior to this article breaking Four. how many names are on there? Four. So just so you know, I don't know. I would have to go back up and try to find and see uh, exactly where it was that this was said. But it was probably said in the in the past two years, because that's what I'm guessing in the past two or three years, because a lot of these prophetic words are from there. But that was the Daily Mail article we were talking about. Sadie, you're walking all over this computer, honey. And so thank you for finding that for me, because that was... That was something else. So that did break right before all of this. So that article breaks right before the assassination attempt, right before Biden steps out of office. That article actually came first. So I just wanted to make sure you saw that. And I think that's where uh, we're going to stop for part one. We have part two we're going to do later on in the week. There is so much more we have to go through with you, but we have to do this in two parts. So what we're going to do is, because they've been waiting in the wings here, we've got Deborah and Juliana. I'm going to have them weigh in on this from Give a Derm, because they've been listening. Hello. Hello. Oh, Thank you for Amanda. having us on. Hi. Oh, it's so good to see you. We've missed you. Oh, we I, miss, I miss you. you. Thank you. Thank you. So oh. uh, you've heard what I was talking about. It's crazy. Isn't it? Oh, yeah. it's nuts. And I love how the Lord is involved in every aspect of life. We yes. think, you know, oh, we're going to categorize it. We can't do that. It's amazing. The corpse flower. Oh, my goodness gracious. I couldn't believe that when I saw that. Oh. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. This is just the icing on the cake. Absolutely. 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 Crazy. Absolutely. Crazy. Of all the crazy that's happening. Oh, my goodness. What a powerful word, too. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, well, thank you. well, you know, it's away today. Well, praise. I, hey, hey, I'm sweating over here. I am. I'm heating up over here. And that's what happened. I guess when, when, when the Holy Spirit's on you. Yeah, you, you probably could not use the corpse flower in your products because they would smell hideous. <laughs> I don't and think your products would. smell wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe, thank maybe you. we can make a special yes. edition and send it to a few people. Corpse flower. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. That might that be, be a great idea. idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So these ladies have give a derm. You know, I talk about it a lot. Give a derm. I use it all the time. Chris, I, I told him Chris started stealing my stuff. I love that. So when they would send me my package, Chris would start picking off and going, this is mine. This is mine. <laughs> so they were gracious enough to make a little package now and send it for Chris. We do. <laughs> so Chris gets a package now too. And actually I started using the mother slugger that yes, that's the name of it. Mother awesome. Slugger. For 
a primer for my makeup. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, no wonder, it looks so good. Yeah, I started using <laughs> yes. it as a primer. That's amazing. That's brilliant. Yes. I yeah. I stumbled upon that myself after uh -huh. I literally just the morning morning after and I like I, that I put it on and then I just I didn't do anything to my face. I just put it straight on uh, my foundation. It is it's incredible. I was I was shocked. Yep, it is. Yep, the bamboo mist too. I'll use as a setting spray for oh that's my brilliant. Makeup. Yep, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. I love that. So I, I do love that, that too. Yep. So, so I've been finding little hacks. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yay. So our, our scrub is particularly beautiful for uh, midsummer, like we're right where we are right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it really is. It's an incredible polisher, but it does a lot more than that. I think people sometimes think, oh, a scrub, like, I, uh, you know, and like people, I think, have mixed emotions about it. But ours is actually a detoxifier as well because it has our proprietary clay blend in it. Plus, it's oxygenating. So it does an incredible Double job of actually pulling toxins and impurities out of the skin, which is obviously in turn, you know, part like just the lymphatic system is just underneath the skin. So it's an incredible detoxifier that is, is, uh, I think maybe uh, not, you know, doesn't have enough attention as far as the, the scrub itself. So it's, it's great. But you know, one of my favorite, favorite, or our favorite summer hacks is the Titan Your Assets Mask. Whenever you get a bug bite or if you get an irritation like poison ivy, you put the mask on it and it starts pulling all, wow. pulling all that out. I got stung by a bee like right here. And uh, I thought it's going to swell up. It's going to look terrible. Juliana said, put some of the mask on mom. Try it. Never did swell, never made a big thing. It was one little tiny dot after after the mask. Wow. So we've had a lot of people, ant bites, chiggers, poison ivy, stings. And we're in that season for it. We are. They're, they're out in a bit. I'm rescuing bees out of the pool right now. There you because go. Because we need to pollinate. Yeah, so absolutely. I've been rescuing I love them. bees. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. absolutely. One, of, one of our team members is a... Um, I, I don't, she is just passionate about bees and I think they're absolutely fantastic, but yeah. I didn't know there was so much to know about bees until I started speaking with her. So she's, anytime that we're trying to new formulas or trying, you know, with our formulator going back and forth, we want to make sure that it's zero cruelty to bees as well. And so it's just, it's really fascinating, but yeah, we absolutely have to have honeybees for sure. Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. Yep. My, my name actually means bee. It does. Really? I, yes. Yep. I thought, wow. you know, my sister's name is Donna and she gets beautiful lady or something like that. Whenever I found out what my name meant, it was Deborah. Deborah meant B. And I thought, oh, until I figured out what they do and they go around and spread little yummy things all around. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. They absolutely do. You kind of do too, but you send it in packages. You spread <laughs> there you go. There you go. See? Too, See? But you send it in packages and I use all of it. I, I mean, the whole facial line I use and I use it twice a day. So I do yeah, the facial line in the morning, but then at night I use the uplift, right? And I use the yep. mother plumper and that's what I use at night. And yep. it works amazing. And Chris uses the eye cream. I use the eye cream too, but Chris really likes I the love eye cream it. I love and the it. body lotion. That's what he's always, and your bar soap. He's always asking me if you've sent more soap. <laughs> it's real. And I'm that's like, I've got a whole drawer full of soap, Chris, that they've sent <laughs> that's so me. Cute. So yes, you that's can go so to the cute. drawer and you can get your soap. I love it. I know. I